Manager for Harrods London in the United Kingdom, and Roger's Business Manager. And I've known Roger for 20 years, and I've been working for him now for just one and a half years, which has been a wonderful experience. Um, as I said, we're very honored to have Roger here today. It's a very rare thing to have Roger because his time schedule is so, so busy. And I believe the next lecture we have is, is the V&A Museum in London, um, United Kingdom. So because the, the preciousness of his time is, uh, is very rare, as I said, so we're, we're very, very lucky to have Roger here just for the day from all the way from London. So thank you very much for listening. Can I just ask one of you if your mobile phones are switched off? That would be lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you. I'd like to hand you over to Mr. Roger Dove. I had a phone call this morning at 6 o'clock from a chirpy person who was phoning me from Oman. And they said, is it early where you are? I said, yes, very early. <laughs> <laughs> the only talk I'm giving this year in my schedule, other than one I'm giving at the Victoria Health Museum, as you've heard. Anyhow, always having been a fan of Sniffer Palooza, I think I can say since the very, very, very beginning, actually before the beginning. Before the beginning, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So, anyhow, uh, I, for, just to tell you very, very quickly a little bit about my background, um, which is I think the first time I've ever publicly spoken about really how all this came about. I fell in love with perfume when I was very, very tiny, maybe, I don't know, five, six, seven years old. It was all to do with a, a goodnight kiss from my mother. And I always say at that single moment, I believe I was put on a pathway uh, which would have shaped my life. Um, I worked, as I'm sure all of you in this room know, I worked at Pierre for 20 years. Uh, I loved it. A friend of mine always described Pierre as the Vatican of perfumery, and it's how I always saw it to be. Uh, it was bought up by a very large company, and what was once a family firm became part of a huge corporation, which in itself I don't have a big issue with, but I did the minute I saw the former starting not to be the way I knew them, and it was then I decided the time had come for me to leave. I opened a perfumery in Harrods, uh, because I was asked by them if I would, which was a very odd thing. Part of my story is I've never done something, in fact, without people saying, why don't you, which is a little bit of an odd thing. But you know, having trained as a perfumer, and always, I hope, championing fine creative perfumery, to be asked by the most important department store in the world, would you open a perfumery, was rather an odd thing. I have been invited in for a cup of tea. Um, and after a long discussion, I decided that I would open what you all know today as the Rotterdam Haute de Parfumerie. It's very important to say that the Haute de Parfumerie still sits totally on its own globally. It still is the only perfumery in the world where somebody's been able to go to the brands and say, I don't want your range. I just choose the perfumes that I think are the best examples of 